This evening we have seen the return of a name that is well, pretty iconic really in Aston Martin's history. In 1967 the version of this car was introduced with a six cylinder engine, then it went to a V8 and there was a bit of a hiatus and in 2007 it reappeared with the car that's just over there. And now we have a brand new DBS. So what is this car? Well, under the bonnet is the 5.2 litre twin turbo V12, now putting out 715 brake horsepower, 664 pounds foot of torque, not 60 miles an hour, 3.4, not 62 miles an hour, sorry, 3.4 seconds, not to 100 miles an hour, 6.4 seconds. They're saying that 50 to 100 miles an hour, I know this is a lot of figures, but you know, they're all up there, so I'm gonna get them out is just 4.4 seconds, which they're saying is a second quicker. Well, I've, I've heard rumoured is a second quicker than a certain Ferrari 812. Now, it's worth pointing out that with all those sort of this humongous amount of torque, they're pitching this car, although most will obviously pitch it as a rival to the 812, they're saying it's, it's more towards the, the GT ends than, than that car, which is um, quite racy, shall we say. Other highlights for this car, well, aerodynamics. So as you can potentially see just behind the front arch there, that's now got more veins in it to extract more air from those front arches. We've also got Aero Blade 2, which lets more air in. And it's got uh, turning bones underneath the car and it's got a double diffuser at the rear. All of this adds up to 180 kilos of downforce at its top speed of 211 miles an hour. Bring you back down from that speed, well, you've got 410 millimeter rotors at the front, carbon ceramic of course. And the other parts of this name is that it's super legera, which means super light, basically. And this car is 72 kilos lighter than a DB11, thanks to, well, mostly carbon body panels. Talking of body panels, it is a very, very good looking thing, this. I'll let you into a secret. I didn't actually really like the previous DBS. I thought it looked, to be honest, like a, a DB9 that was just a bit tarted up. This has a much more cohesive look to it. Yes, it is obviously based on a DB11, but it's much more, much more muscular, a much more sort of fitting car, I think, for that top of the tree DBS. So let's talk about the handling, which has obviously been tuned by Matt Becker, and it, that bodes well, because when he got his hands on the Vanquish, that really, really improved that car. We've got a mechanical limited slip diff attached to a ZF eight-speed gearbox, uh, which is familiar, but it's been strengthened, and it's got a shorter final drive as well. In fact, all the torque isn't available in first and second gear, so much torque is there. In terms of suspension, we've still got double wishbones at the front, multi-link setup at the rear, which seems to be the, the way with Astons these days. It's five millimeters lower in terms of its ride height than a DB11, and they've done various things in terms of it's got, it's got more camber, and the engine mounts have in fact been changed so that they are now stiffer longitudinally and laterally, uh, although not vertically, uh, to give a different sort of characteristics to the car. Um, basically to give it overall, it's got to have more grip and more traction than the DB11, but they're saying it's going to have a breadth of talent because it's got the three modes in it, which we've seen before with adaptive dampers with Skyhook technology. Uh, so GT, Sport and Sport Plus, um, different to the Vantage, which obviously added that, that race um, element, so it's sticking with the GT Sport and Sport Plus. And they're saying there's going to be a greater diversity of the sort of range and breadth of capability of this car. A super GT then. Can't wait to drive it, which we should be doing fairly soon.